Hello everyone and welcome to VizRT Tuesday Tutorials. My name is Richard Evans. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Today I'd like to take a look at Live Call Connect to show you how you can bring in remote calls from Microsoft Teams into your TriCaster and treat them as if your remote callers were right there in the room with you. I'm going to show you how you can bring in those calls, what to send back to your callers, also do screen sharing, uh, the mix minus, everything you need in one video. So, let me show you how it's done, son. All right, so I am here on my TriCaster 2 Elite interface. And just to give you a breakdown of what I have going here, I have my mix effect number six on my program output right now, just to show you some video when I have this Teams call set up, okay? And my remote callers will show up in these boxes as I start to do things. Okay, so the uh, first thing I wanna show you is how you configure what you're gonna be sending back to your Teams callers, okay? So to do that, we'll click on this gear icon in the bottom right of our program to open up the setup menu. And basically what you're gonna be sending back to your callers is anything that is selected under app return down here at the bottom. So this will be everything that you send to uh, Live Call Connect callers, okay? So uh, currently I have it set up as mix number one, which is assigned to my program, but I'm gonna switch it up a bit. What I wanna have happen is I don't wanna have my callers see the different switches I'm doing here. I wanna have them just see this particular mix effect, okay? So, so this double box that I have here. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna choose one of my other mixes. So let's just do, uh, let's do mix eight, okay? So mix eight, I'm going to pull down this drop down. Instead of sending them program, I'm gonna say mix effects and send them my mix effect number six. So this is all that they're gonna see. But what I'll need to do then is on my app return, click down here and send them mix eight. So they're only gonna see what's coming out of mix number eight. So I have that routed properly now. Okay. Now the next thing is the audio we want to send back to our remote callers. So under this audio tab on the drop down here, uh, what I want to do is, uh, what I recommend doing is sending them the, uh, the master of everything because that way they can hear all their different callers and then they can also hear any video playback that you have, like say that you play out of your DDR or out of your uh, audio, uh, sound mixer, uh, etc. So, uh, so go ahead and send the master, but then a big key feature here is click on this, which is mix minus. And now the mix minus, what that allows you to do is uh, it'll send all the audio to your team's callers individually minus their own voice. So they're not hearing their own voice coming back at them because that, that can be distracting, especially if there's a little bit of latency or there might be some phasing involved, et cetera. So make sure that you click on mix minus here and that will route all of that for you. So your, again, your remote callers are gonna be hearing everything except for themselves. Cool. All right, so we have that all configured. So now let me move over to my multi-viewer number two where I have my Teams call already set up. Okay, so uh, I have this already set up because I, I, I don't have people that I can call. I'm doing this video on my own. So I have uh, some video, some other computers here in my studio that are connected via Microsoft Teams and have this call up and, and running. Okay, now another step. So this is the call itself, but one thing you need to do within Microsoft Teams, let me go ahead and open up that tab. So I have that open here in the background. So uh, what you'll need to do is click on these three dots up here for your settings, which I'm already in this menu, and then go to app permissions, and make sure that your production tools are on, okay? So this will allow you to send out your, uh, your uh, Microsoft Teams calls individually uh, to different inputs, okay? Now, for some reason, it says here that the latest NDI binaries have not been installed. There will be a link in here that will allow you to update those and get you uh, what you need on there, okay? So, uh, once that's up and running, again, make sure that that is clicked on, and now let's go back to our Teams call, okay? So, how I have this currently broke down is I have my uh, New Tech Studio account here. That is gonna be one call coming in from one of my AI callers. All right, and then on the second one is I have Lenny here. 
uh, broadcasting his video and audio, and then also he's sharing his screen, which we'll see over here uh, as uh, another uh, source that can bring into our system. Okay, so he's doing screen sharing because within Microsoft Teams, you can not only send your uh, camera feed and your microphone feed, but then you can also send other things like your screen sharing, et cetera. So that's what I have him doing, and those are, so Lenny is sending two signals, where this studio one is only sending one signal. And as you can see down here at the bottom, that is my return feed back to my callers. And if I wanted to say toggle um, my video on and off, I can go up here to camera and simply hit that button, turn it off like that, so that goes blank, bring it back on. Uh, and then also if I wanted to mute my audio, I can do that as well from here simply by clicking on that microphone and that corresponds down here on my return feed, okay? So that just depends on how you wanna have it set up, but by default, usually you're just gonna have those on so they can see what's going on on your end kind of thing. Okay, cool. So now we have that up and running. Now, one other key piece of information that we need to make sure, so not only did we make sure that our production tools are turned on over on this menu, but within your call, you also need to go up to this more actions button here, these three dots, click on that, all right? And then go to streaming, and I'm currently streaming it, but let me go ahead and stop that and go up to streaming again. Let's broadcast over NDI. So now that will allow you to broadcast your signals uh, on this system via NDI so you get those isolated channels coming in. So let's go ahead and turn that on, broadcast over NDI, cool, we are good to go. So we have all of this set up, good to go on this side. So now let's move back over to the TriCaster interface and bring in those calls and let me show you how that looks. Okay, so input number one here. Let's go ahead and click on the input configuration icon. And under source, this is where you'll click on this drop down source and you're gonna need to select the name of the TriCaster that you are using. So the name of my TriCaster that I'm using is this ITP TC203. And this shows all the different sources that I'm broadcasting over NDI. And you can see right here, Microsoft Teams, that's the one I need. Let's go ahead and bring in Lenny Nelson first. All right, so cool. His input is coming in on input number one. And I have my mix effect set up to where his input shows up on the left box. Now also take a look at the audio mixer. You'll see when he starts talking, when he starts talking, uh, input number one, the VU meters will bounce there because that's where his audio is coming from isolated from everybody else, okay? So it's just his audio. Now keep in mind the way that Live Call Connect is also set up is it gives you the option to also just bring in everybody's audio into one signal, which is over here under apps, okay? So if you wanted to just have just one simple um, uh, audio source coming in where it's just everybody, you can have it just show up in apps individually and uh, I currently have that muted because I don't want to have doubles because I want to be able to control this individually. So if I need to boost uh, Lenny's signal or bring it down, I can do that from my faders, uh, et, et cetera. So that's just a, a little nitpicky thing if you want to do that, okay? So now let's go ahead and bring in our second caller. We'll go to input two, source drop down. Again, we'll find the TriCaster name that I'm working on, which is this, and select that one. Boom, all right. So. So as you can see, I, I have my input number two uh, coming in from my Teams call and also corresponds to my mix effect box. And then also down in my audio mixer, whenever she starts talking, you'll see that I have an individual audio feed over here in input number two. All right, so let's go ahead and wait for her to start speaking just so you can see it. There you go. So individual feed in here. So again, I can turn her up and down however I need. Okay, so now, Let's bring in the screen sharing that uh, Lenny's call is doing into input number three. Cool, so we'll, again, we'll click on that and source drop down. We'll select the name of the TriCaster again and we'll go to shared screen. Boom, all right, so now I am individually bringing in uh, the uh, feed from his PowerPoint presentation. Now, one thing I do wanna mention here is since that particular feed is coming from the exact same caller, you'll see in the audio mixer is I have input number one and number three are the same thing because it's the same call, all right? And since I have these isolated, uh, what I would 
the best way to do this would be, I'm just gonna mute input number three here, like so. Cool, so now I'm only gonna get one of Lenny's audio source coming into my system. Excellent, so we have all of this routed how we need to, and now I can switch these calls like they were in the room with me. So I can say, hey, let's go to input number one. Okay, actually she's talking, let's go over here. And then as I swip, swap conversations, I can switch back to number one, or show the PowerPoint, or go and select mix effect number six, and have my double box up. Now I mentioned that because, uh, let me go ahead and minimize this a little bit. So you're gonna see me switching over here, but if we take a look back on my multi-viewer, you'll see that they are only getting my double box effect because of how I set this up in the beginning of that call. Now, if I wanted to, I could switch that to program, but I'm gonna leave it this way just so they're seeing themselves uh, in this particular box so they can frame themselves and not scoot out of the way like in their chair, et cetera, so they're in the right spots. Cool, so uh, that's pretty much ready to go, and now we I can switch this production as if they were connected via an SDI cable, an HDMI cable, whatever, but they're not even connected via a cable because they are coming through via NDI and not even anywhere near my studio, which is awesome. So uh, again, this is gonna be for your uh, TriCaster Mini S, your TriCaster 2 Elite, your uh, TriCaster Vector, and the TriCaster Vision. So update your TriCaster via the uh, update feature or off of our website, vizrt.com and play around with this, and of course, have some fun. There you have it, another awesome way to bring in your remote Microsoft Teams callers with Live Call Connect and TriCaster, so cool. Now for more tutorial videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the VizRT YouTube channel at youtube.com slash official. And for formalized VizRT product training, sign up for Viz University, available at vizrt.com slash community slash viz dash university. And you can find more information about VizRT products and services by contacting your local VizRT partner, or you can check out our website, vizrt.com. And of course, if you are posting your work using VizRT products on social media, hey, tag us using the hashtags VizRT, TriCaster, or Vision. We see all of these posts, Love what you're working on. Keep up the great work. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you again real soon for another episode of VizRT Tuesday Tutorials.